Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here. Welcome to this AMD FM2 Plus build guide. For the list of parts, check out the parts list video I made in the description down below or at the end of this video. So let's start with the motherboard assembly. If you don't have an anti-static surface, you can use the box to set your board on while you work on it. To install the CPU, carefully take out the CPU and lift the ZIF socket arm. Notice that there is an arrow on the corner of the socket, usually on the opposite end of the lever you just lifted. There is an arrow on the CPU as well, and you need to line up the two arrows to insert the CPU. There's no force needed to put the CPU. It should just go in smoothly. Lower the arm and there will be some slight tension on that arm. If you're only installing two out of the four DIMM slots for memory, then you need to install them in the A1 and B1 slots. Start by pulling back on the clips. It does not need too much force, so be careful not to break them off. Line up the notch in the middle of the RAM and the slots. Press firmly down on the RAM until the clips click back into place. You might need to grip the motherboard for added support. Putting on the stock CPU cooler does not require thermal compound because it comes pre-applied. Make sure you place the CPU cooler straight down onto the CPU. Try not to let it move around on the CPU surface. Hook one side of the latch and then hook the other side with the lever and lock it down. And now you can plug in the fan connector. You can plug it into any three or four pin fan header. Optionally, I will show you how to install an aftermarket cooler. Remove the stock cooler and wipe the CPU down with alcohol. Now you can unscrew the CPU brackets. And then take off the back plate. Screw the bracket and the back plate together so you can store it and keep it in a safe place. Let's take a look at the new cooler and the parts we will be using. Here's the multi-socket backplate. This side is for the Intel socket CPUs. And this side is for the AMD socket CPUs we will be using. Don't take off the protective sheet on the bracket. Leave it alone. Notice that the bolt is flat on one side and the bracket hole is also flat on one side. This is to keep it from spinning while you screw it all down. The spring-loaded screws need to be in a specific groove to align with the bracket. For this AMD build, all four corners will be using the middle groove. Thread the bolt through the back plate and screw them all down by hand. Then use a supplied screwdriver socket to tighten them all down with the screwdriver. Peel off the sticker on the bottom of the CPU block and remove one of the fans for now to make the insulation process easier. Place the tension bracket into the cooler and spread the arms out to match the socket screws on the motherboard. You can do a test to see if the screws all line up with the socket screws. Before applying the thermal compound, wipe it all down with some alcohol and let it dry. The cooler comes with its own compound and it is sufficient, however, I am instead using the Arctic MX2 compound.
place a small line across the middle in the same direction as the text on the CPU. This is because the CPU die is laid out in this same direction. Place the CPU cooler straight down onto the CPU and hand thread the screws just to start. Don't forget to screw it down in a diagonal order. Place the fan back onto the cooler and plug it into the motherboard header pin. Prep the case by installing the input-output shield. The power supply will be installed facing the fan down because of the filter and the grill on the bottom of the case. It's up to you to figure out what is best because it will work either way facing up or down in this particular case. Now screw in the PSU using four coarse threaded screws. You can thread the 24 and 8 pin cables in the grommets of the case to make it easier later on when it comes to plugging in the power to the motherboard. Installing the standoffs for this ATX size motherboard requires the use of 9 screw holes. Follow the guide that is on the case or just hold the motherboard over the holes and figure out which ones you need. Before dropping in the motherboard, make sure there are no metal tabs sticking out of the I.O. plate. Bring the board in at an angle and align it with the standoffs. Screw the board down and make sure you are using the fine threaded screws. Don't tighten them each down yet. Keep it loose until all the screws are in and then tighten them down. Now is a good time to plug in the main power cables. For the ATX power, try to grip the connector and the motherboard together to prevent them from flexing the board too much. The CPU power cables might come in a 4 or 8 pin variety. Some motherboards might require an extra 4 pin Molex connection to power the PCI Express slots. This is usually only needed when you fill up every single slot with a large power draw. The USB 3.0 cable is slotted in a way to make it easy to plug in. Just be careful not to bend the pins while plugging it in. The same goes for the front panel audio connector. Look into the manual or follow the guide on your motherboard for the front panel connectors. It is important that you plug the positive connector to the positive pins. Most of the pins will have a small arrow that indicates it is a positive connector. Now take out the hard drive brackets that you will be using. Since I don't have a need for the top half of the drive cage, I'm going to remove it for better airflow from the front fans. Line up the bottom holes of the hard drive and use the long flathead screws that came with the case. This is made to go through the vibration dampening rubber grommets.
for the two and a half inch drives, you would just use the fine threaded screws. No need for vibration dampening grommets. Now slide the drives back into the cage. To install the optical disk drive, remove the five and a quarter inch bezel and slide the drive in. Line up the holes and screw them in using the fine threaded screws. Now plug in the power cables to all the drives. These are slotted in such a way so it will only fit in one way. The same goes for all the SATA cables. Don't forget to practice some cable management and route your cables neatly. Usually on AMD systems, all the SATA ports are identical, meaning they all use the same chipset controllers, so plug the SATA cables to any of the ports on the motherboard. Remove the rear slot covers from the case and insert the graphics card. The GPU is slotted much like the RAM chips were. Screw in the graphics card and then plug in the power cord. This card uses a 6 pin power connector. This case came with two rear fans and they are plugged into the motherboard here next to the 4 pin Molux connector. Now plug in any additional power plugs like the fan controller and distributor. Close up just the back side of the case for now to see if all of your cables fit. Then plug in only the essentials to your build like the video, network, keyboard, and mouse. Before plugging in the power cord, make sure the PSU is turned off. Switching it to the circle means off, and after plugging in the cord so that it is secure, you can switch the PSU back on. Now give it a power on test and make sure the fans turn on and drives spin up. That concludes this build guide. Be sure to check out the next video where I show you how to install and configure Windows as well as some of the BIO settings to get your system up and running. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with anyone that is considering on building an AMD system. This guide can be applied to almost all the other AMD platforms, not just this one. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.